My Love of Life Energy is a podcast created by Anna Scott. Anna knows that every human being sees life uniquely. In this podcast, she will talk to people and learn from them. These conversations are to shine the brilliance of each human being she speaks to. Join her. After each exploration, you will expand on your insights and see truth and beauty. Welcome. I'm so thrilled and honored uh, to be talking today to Sophie. And Sophie, I, I think it's Sophie Schweitzer. Is that correct? Got it correct? That's correct. Yes. And I met Sophie on one of Michael Neal's um, coaching programs. And I just felt madly in love with her. There was a presence and a kindness um, and a spaciousness that that's really rare in our culture. And we got to talk again and it was really with her that I came up with this idea that I really wanted to start a podcast about um, energy, life energy, because I'm madly in love with it. And she said yes to me. So we're going to explore this conversation together and see where it goes. But I hope you, you get to experience what space, love, presence feels like that's in you. I mean, if you hear Sophie, you'll get to. <laughs> that's been my experience. <laughs> so Sophie, welcome. <laughs> Oh, gosh, Anna, thank you for this warm, spacious introduction. And, uh, and of course, I can only say, you, if, if it's true, we get to experience that. It's, because Anna obviously is experiencing herself. <laughs> it's like, my God, because I had the same, I had the same meeting Anna at Michael, one of Michael Neal's um, intensives. We were paired up together and it was like, Oh my God, I'm home with Anna. Oh. It felt like, it felt like, uh, it, feel, it truly felt like coming home. It was such a delight, unexpected, and there it was. So I'm glad to be here, Anna. Let's let's indeed dance, like you said earlier. Oh my God, I I'm curious, where where did you? What's like? It's not the how, but what made you interested in life force energy? What made you interested in this stuff that we're studying? I, I, you know what, you start, you, you, I, I should say, start to peel off layers, question, what is this stuff that people talk about? Happiness, love, pain, um, my own pain. The happiness I sometimes feel. Um, what used to be absolutely not attainable when I was much younger. Joy or happiness, right? It's like out there. And, and just going like, it is available. Right, so you start this quest. I mean, isn't that what we do? We st- isn't that isn't that what we do? We we um, we want to be happy, hmm. right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's essential, right? We want to be happy, so you go on a quest, and when the looking out there no longer works, you go like, okay, <laughs> like, oh, okay, shit. that didn't work. <laughs> That didn't work. <laughs> um, it took, it, you know, it's, yeah. You know, it's so funny, Sophie. I, I forgot about looking outside. I really, I totally forgot about that. Like, I, I chased the dream. Like, I became, you know, like a director of sales. And I remember one year with stock options, I made a half million dollars in stock and salary. And I was miserable. And I really thought like I'd arrived, like I had all the paper, but I forgot that I, like I I hadn't thought about that in 20 years that I was chasing that. Did you do that? Chasing the- The happiness outside of me, getting the stuff, getting the titles, getting the, you know, the beautiful home. 
Yeah, it's the chasing, right? It's the chasing. And for me, it wasn't so much uh, the chasing to get it, but almost um, it was almost the opposite. It's almost like since I can't get it anyway, I can't get love, wealth, fame, fortune. Um, I'm not going to do anything anymore. It, it was self-defeating. Um, I settled for less than anything at all. Oh, wow. And then something good came my way. I was so sure it would be taken away again that I would just sabotage it. It was the other way around. So yes, it was out there, but since the out there would be taken away if I were even going after it in the first place, I didn't go after anything at all. It's like settling for very little. Wow, it was kind of like a it, wide bobber. Beautiful people came my way and um, they hang in there with me, but I could barely let anything in. Oh, wow. Yeah. It, so, it, what did you see? What was an insight that you had that allowed you to start seeing life differently? It happened early, you know, it is in my the shift actually started already in my 20s. Um, maybe that's not early. It seems early. Um, people genuinely, genuinely loving me. They weren't letting me off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so then I still didn't go after the corporate and the wealth like you did. I didn't. Um, but it was then that's more then um, it was more like, what is this about? Mm. That people actually, it was stunning to me that people actually genuinely love. Mm. And that I met them. Oh, wow. And so gradually it started to percolate and could come out. But So that was more the quest then. And was I still looking outside of myself? Absolutely, especially in relationships, um, the right place to live. Um, but, but often still in a reactive way, right? Like, um, yeah. I, I'm so curious. When you said you were, it, these are my words, you said you, it was almost like you were mystified that people loved. Yes. And I'm curious, what, what did you see about that? Or what do you see about that now? How big? <laughs> how, how big? <laughs> how how vastly capable we are and we are not letting half of it in or half of it out it's like tell me about love what do you know i love to hear about from you like <sighs> love it uh, as if as if actually without us knowing it love is love is claiming itself through us in every moment right oh my god i love that love is claiming us in every moment but say more about that that's that's like <laughs> that's but i want i want you to talk about it too because uh, i know you've come such a long journey as well so um i don't see it in every moment Absolutely not. Mm. But more and more, I also know that's okay. That's totally okay. 
we're human we're so human and that's that's part of that love claiming itself so it's there's an okayness with it and um what do you see anna when we talk I, like this i just I, I was um running some errands before we talked and i had this really simple moment of, I live in Oakland and it's a very mixed race community. And um, there was a beautiful African-American woman that had a, the sign on that said Black Lives Matter. And then I think this woman must have been Filipino or um, another, ethni another ethnicity. And they were strangers, they didn't know each other. And I looked at the kindness that they shared in the moment. It was just this, you know, it's like witnessing a movie or something where somebody, they paused and looked into each other's eyes and they just said, have a good day. Like they acknowledged each other. Like, I think one must have helped somebody or something like that. I don't know what the cause was for that. Mm -hmm. But it was such a tender moment to me and seeing two human beings um, just being present and being human beings. And just seeing not the mushy love, like the Hollywood, like, oh, I love you and you're gonna save my life. And we're gonna have six kids together. It's more of just the innate kindness of human beings. When we don't have a lot of, when we're not caught up and we don't have a lot of thinking, we're just kind and generous. Yeah. And that's the kind of love and it was just, you know, it's like one of those moments I'm talking about, but I'm not doing it justice. It was one of those moments, it was like watching a flower bloom. It was just so, I was just thinking about everything that's going on in the world. And here is this moment where that love that you talked about existed. And I got a snapshot of it. Like I got to witness it. I could feel it. I mean, maybe that's my own story, but I just, and I just believe it is in all of us. You know, we're human beings, when they fall out of their thinking, as you know, everybody tells me, we're this love and we're kind. They're, they're clients that I, there's this one man that I worked with and like three weeks ago, he was all caught up in his head and we walked out on the trail and he didn't see another human being because he was all caught up in his thinking. And we got to the bench and turned around and his thinking had quieted down. And I could just feel his goodwill. It was like, it was like bubbling up. And then every person, like dogs started coming up to him. Every person was a hello. And, and I'm like, do you see this? <laughs> do you see how kind you are? You can trust that. That's what I see. Yeah. And you can trust that, right? You can trust that that kindness exists that that love exists. Um, so tell me more, and because I would love to explore this together. What is it about all this when we don't do a lot of thinking? You know, we, we both you and I study this thing called the three principles yeah. by Sydney Banks. And I... Um, I can talk about it. I think you're a Buddhist. You, you meditate, your deep meditation practice. And like we live in a culture that doesn't understand thought, like just understand the capital T. But to me, it's like vacation mind. When people go on vacation, they seem to really enjoy themselves, not because of the place they're in, but because all of a sudden their thinking quiets down. Yeah. And and seeing that allows our nature, like how well-made we are, how kind we are, to pop up, just to be there. Yeah. You know, that's, that's what I've seen. I mean, I've seen it yeah. when I broke my foot, somebody hopped up to help me. I could see other people were engaged in their conversation or whatever they're doing, but the guy who wasn't immediately hopped up to help the door, open the door for a lady on crutches, an old lady on crutches. <laughs> yeah. From from your practice, your um, meditation practice, how do you see thought and getting caught up? In it? Yeah, I had a very interesting experience yesterday, mm -hmm. just to illustrate. 
uh, because it was suddenly so clear. Um, we were meditating. I was with my partner, husband, and uh, it was a beautiful day. It was very quiet. And um, this little, 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 little airplane was going overhead. Um, one of those tiny, I don't know, they're little tiny things. And it was, a, was sort of a humming sound. And it does so. I think it does tours. And it comes over our head quite often. It has never bothered me. It really has never bothered me, ever. It's just sort of this humming sound on a beautiful summer day. It only does it on summer days because that's when visitors are in it. I think it can take two, two visitors, two tourists. My husband doesn't like it. So he has talked about it. Now that the days are getting summery again, it's flying more. And he's just that morning, he had talked about, I don't like that airplane. Hmm. And... Um, so it came overhead and I realized it was peaceful at first and then suddenly I had some thinking about it. Oh, my husband doesn't like it. And all of a sudden, I didn't like it so much anymore either. <laughs> now this has been going on for years. And then the other insight was like, it's I've always associated with peacefulness because um, in the Netherlands where I grew up, little airplanes on beautiful summer days would go over. And I don't know if this existed in America, but they would have little banners that advertised something. Oh, wow. Only on summer days they did that. And it was, it was summer, it was peaceful, I was little, and an airplane would buzz over. It was just all part of the same peacefulness. Oh, wow. And yesterday, for the first time, I like, oh, I have some thinking about this. And it drew me out of that peacefulness. It's like, this is fascinating. It was just fascinating insight. Wow. What, what I love what you just shared, Sophie, it just shows, it's so powerful on so many different dimensions. One is that you can have new thinking about anything. Yeah. Yes. And, and it, preferences can change. Yeah, and it changes your, it, it actually changes how you view the world. Yeah. I, I just find that mind, like that simple example is, is so powerful in so many different ways. Just the observation that you're peaceful, peaceful, then thinking comes up. And it was new thinking about the plane. Totally new thinking. Right. And depending on the new thinking we have, whether it's good or bad, we'll feel it. Yeah. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> How did that plane know what it was giving you? <laughs> I know. I really, really, right? And it's that's the whole thing with, with thoughts that, that um, yeah, thought really creates how we view things, right? And then, but then somehow we forget that. Well, and then, then you got to experience it. What I love the story you just shared was, you know, normally the way you viewed it, it would just be a pleasant experience. It's such a perfect yeah. example of how we're experiencing our thinking. You're thinking about the plane was it's, oh, it's summer, it's peaceful, it's beautiful, warm. So you had a beautiful, good feeling. And now it became an irritation. Yes. Same plane, different thinking, different feeling. We're just feeling our thinking. Yeah. Yeah. And to note the thinking, right? The, the beauty is to catch it too. And, and, um, and then I am curious to ask you, if you explore this further, how do we learn to catch that feeling, that thinking, so we can see what's happening? And and come back to, it's okay. Mm. What's really going on? How do we do that, Anna? I, How do we encourage others to do that? Well, what I think you have to become, I mean, I think you said it in the beginning, you were interested. 
Right. Mm. I think Good point. The, the minute, I think this is the beauty of human beings and how well built we are, is the minute we're interested in something, we'll find, we'll find what we're looking for. It's built in. The interest starts to reveal things. And then it becomes interested in how I felt. Like once you get a taste, like I always equate it to good food, like really good homemade bread. Like if you get fresh bread made out of the oven, like a fresh croissant homemade or like, you know, by, as opposed to a store package, you probably want to go eat the fresh bread. I like to feel good. And because I understand this, why would I want to listen to my crappy thinking? Not that I don't get it. But I'm sure willing to put it down faster because I recognize what it is. Because you recognize it. I, I love the metaphor of the bread because you recognize the fresh bread. You know what that right. feels like. Come on, like that? Oh my God. It's so, it's, it's, it's so essential, right? It's like we pick it up with our senses, like you say, the feeling, the perception. It's like, um, and then that pulse, like not habitually reach for the store-bought bread, but like, hey, I'm just going to go for that. If you don't know that the fresh bread even exists or you've never, you, you can't remember the taste because we all know. I mean, so if you, you say it best to me that this is in all of us, but we forget, like we don't remember what it tastes like. Right. But God, the minute we taste it, we're like, oh, that's good. And we, it's good because we know. <laughs> um, it's good because we recognize what good is. Because we are that. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's interesting. Say that again, that's good. I think we recognize it's good because we are that. I think... It's like what you said in the very beginning when you um, said all these beautiful things because we recognize that is who we are, right? It's like, why do we, why do we go after happiness out there in the first place? Oh, wow. Because something in us knows what happiness is. Otherwise, why would we even go after it? Oh, God, Sophie. I, um... <laughs> this is the thing about these conversations. <laughs> I just had never thought about that way, and I can hear the truth of it. Yeah, it's because um, we're misguided, right? But but we are. It's um, and this is not for me. I read this um, Mr. Kadata Maharaj wrote about that. It's it's because of love of ourselves that we go after the happiness out there. But we can turn it around. Um, because we know it already. It, it just did, um, the thing that I'm playing with about love, the other, last week I had this moment where I really got myself into, excuse the expression, but my panties were in a wad and I was spinning and I was upset. And instead of trying to fix it and get rid of the feeling. I was actually just present and loved myself. And I think it was the first time I ever really genuinely did it from that point of view. Not trying to fix it, not trying to go away, but just offer myself the same presence that I give to my clients. I wanted to give it to myself. And it was such a profound difference. You know, that love is inside of me and I can be aware of it and I can give it to myself. And it just kind of changed everything. I stopped trying to, I, I didn't want to fix me because there's nothing wrong. Yeah. Do 
Yeah. There's nothing in that's that presence, right? There's nothing wrong in that presence that you then gave to yourself. That presence is so big. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's the spaciousness that I feel in you, that I feel in me. That's that's it. Yeah. And and to recognize, like you, you say your panties get in the water or whatever, like to recognize like for me as well right we we we're we're so human too over and over and over and over and that that is totally okay that we can actually totally ride all that um and when i remember that and that's not always at all um, there's a softness, a tenderness for, for everything around me. I, I just have more, it's not even empathy, right? It's like, hey, we're really in this together. I, um, the feeling that I get from you is like this generosity and compassion to be human. And it seems such a better place to work and live from and create from when we're in this space rather than the beating up, berating, you know, what is wrong? In your experience, is it more effective? <laughs> I mean, let's let's just go like you know. You can hear people say, "Yeah, this is all good and well." This talking about love and all that. But seriously, in your experience, is it more effective to come from a place of spaciousness, uh, recognizing our compassion and generosity in our humanity, being okay? I, I can only say what I've experienced in life with people. If I'm working with other people, they seem to. Um, be willing to go out of the way for me. They're willing to help me. They're willing to um, do what's right and fix things. Then when I'm my raving bitch self, yeah. when I'm that way, I find that it's much more difficult to accomplish what I want, probably because I can't even see the road. Yeah. Like I can't even see what to do because I'm so caught up doesn't mean I always get exactly what I want, but I also know that I sleep better and I enjoy life a hell lot more. How about you? What have you seen? Yeah, for me, um, you know, staying with that effectiveness, it's way more effective hmm. because it's that quiet mind. Hmm. Um, and there is that spaciousness. So it's like uh, there is a... Uh, there's space to receive and there's space for new energy to go out because it's like literally you know we have all these expressions in our language but we're literally not in our own way yeah. or in the way of of others who have that same who share that spaciousness the, the thing that i'm seeing from what i'm just seeing right now when you're talking why it's more effective is because i can see what choices are out there yeah yes like i can see the different possibilities when i'm caught up i can't see it there's no room yeah and that in fact the, the indicator being caught up is to say let it go because it's not clear thinking so we, we're, we're coming to the end and i, I can't believe it <laughs> What do, you, what do you want, if people want to contact you, how do they do that? Because you're a coach like me and you're yeah. a gift. How do they find you? Well, 
Anna, this has been wonderful to talk with you and thank you for even asking. I didn't even think this question that you would ask this, <laughs> but people can find me on LinkedIn. That's under Sophia Schweitzer. And of course, my website is spacebeyondwords.com. Oh, wonderful. Well, I will make sure that is all in the write-up because I think to work with you would be such a gift, just such a... Um... Well, I know what it's like to talk. To you. Well, you just experience what it's like to talk to you. <laughs> I just work together with you. It's, it's heaven. <laughs> and and of course, it's totally mutual. I um, I just want to say I had no idea we were what we were going to do, Anna, or talk about, or be together. Um, and this was this was cool. How we wove the love into effective living or whatever that is right love and maybe we wove in a lot and a quiet mind um and i wanted to thank you for that for opening that space this space here i loved it thank you for playing with me it's um god it's a gift it's i'm getting chills right now what it's a gift to be with you but it's also a gift to have this understanding to see this like, wouldn't you want, like, I'd want everybody to know this. I know. Really? I'd like everybody to have the kind of experience we just had. Yeah. So, so much love. Yes. So much love to you and to your, our listeners. Thank you for listening, everyone. And uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs>